These days, I use Grid a lot more often than I use Flexbox, and in this video, I'm gonna share three of my favorite tips and tricks to taking advantage of Grid and the cool things that we can do with it. Hi there, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, I help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. Today, we're looking at one of my favorite things about CSS, CSS Grid. Let's just go and dive in and, and check these out because this is, this is fun. This is what I love. Um, and we're gonna start here by pre how we can pre prevent overflow when we use min-max. And so let's go and take a look. And what I have right now is I have this uh, grid setup class. So actually this is a nice way to start, just so you know. Uh, bonus tip, if ever you have lots of grid classes and you're always doing like grid something, uh, and then down here I have another one, which is my grid auto flow. By starting things like this, it just means they'll all get my display grid plus a gap of one. Uh, if you'd like to know more about the selector, I'll put a link to my advanced selector video um, in the description down below. But uh, yeah, so a bonus tip right there, but let's get into the real tip itself. And so that's the, the min max here, and that's on my grid even columns that we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna do uh, grid even columns, and I don't need to dis declare my display grid because it's already being declared there. And what we're going to do is say a grid template columns. And if you saw my previous grid video, I looked at the very, very basics of how we can set things up by doing a repeat. And then let's just say we do four comma one FR, uh, and that gives me four columns. If you don't even know about this, I'd really strongly recommend that you check out that video. So once again, I'll link to that in the description down below. Start there, then come back to this one, because this is sort of the very basics we're gonna build up on top of. And what we're going to do with this is instead of a repeat of four, I want it to just repeat automatically a little bit. So I, it's not, I want the browser to figure it out. So I'm gonna use an auto fit here. There is an auto fit and an auto fill. Auto fit's probably the one you want 95% of the time in my experience. Uh, when we use auto fit, we wanna put a min max here. And I'm gonna put in a pretty big number for my min max. We're gonna do 500 and then one FR. Basically now we have their stacking. And if there's room for two of them to be 500 pixels, that's the smallest it's allowed to be. So if there's room for two of them to be 500 pixels next to one another, it's going to do that and they'll go next to one another. And then that one FR just means they'll always stretch to fill the available space because if we didn't have that, we can even turn that off. Uh, let's just do 500 here too. Um, then we just get 500 and they're sort of this ugly way of doing it. So the one FR just makes sure that they can stretch. The issue with this is while this could work really well for the layout that you're working, they will also cause overflow if it goes below 500. And I'm using a bit of a bigger number just to exaggerate the overflow, but no matter what number you're putting here, I'd recommend wrapping it inside of a min function. And so we could put my 500 back, but with the min function, we want to provide it at least two values. You could provide it more. And the other one I'm going to do is 100%. And what that means is by, it's sort of going to look at this and say the min max is going to save 500 or one FR. So it's going to work just like it worked before. But the difference now is there's no overflow as this gets smaller. We have no side scrolling that's happening. And that's because once this is smaller than 500 pixels, this min function kicks in. And it's going, well, either be 500 pixels or 100% of the parent. So in this case, 100% is smaller than the 500, so it just fills up the entire parent. And then we get that. So it doesn't matter what number this is, You know, maybe for this layout, 300 pixels works better, whatever it is. But it just know you'll just know that you'll never run into any issues, and maybe that's not the greatest because now we get one left over here. Um, but it's just a nice fail safe to always ensure that there's never any overflow on those. The next thing I want to look at, and I'm actually going to comment out um, this grid even columns because if not, we'll have to keep scrolling. Uh, basically, we have the same thing we had before, but now we have a few more items on here. Uh, and what I like doing here, let's just do this is grid auto columns. And this is something I use all the time, and it's something that a lot of people forget about or don't realize we have. Uh, instead of doing setting up template columns and saying you want columns, sometimes you just want things to be columns right away, almost like Flexbox. You do display flex, you get your you get it, right? It works. So here we can say grid auto flow of column singular, because the plural doesn't work there. <laughs> and what that means is uh, I clearly took the wrong class name. I called it auto flow, not auto columns, <laughs> auto flow, because that's what we have here. There we go. And that makes, it automatically makes columns. It just does. 
Uh, the one thing that can happen is it's possible they're not all the same size. So if you are going to use this, I'd strongly also recommend doing grid auto columns, plural, of 1FR. And that's just going to ensure you can see things balanced out a little bit when that happened. So that's just going to ensure that all these automatic columns are 1FR in size. Now at very small sizes, um, if you have long words coming in, it is possible this throws things off a little bit, but hopefully you're not squishing things too much. And as you notice, this does cause some uh, side scrolling just because we're, you know, we're running out of room for this. It's a little bit like how Flexbox would work. And so the simple solution here is to just wrap this in a media query at media min width, let's say 50, whoops, 50 M. And we can just wrap all that in my media query. And now at small screen sizes, they'll stack, but we still have the display grid on there. So we still get this gap of one M that comes through, which is super handy. And then when we get to the larger screen size, then we get just get this auto column like this. And we don't have to worry about if there's two items, 10 items, four items, it's always gonna make equal columns every time, which is super handy. Uh, I also use this outside of a media query for doing things like side scrolling. Uh, on like I did a media scroller recently, I did a Netflix clone type thing recently, and both of those are using uh, a grid auto flow just because it makes that so much easier and super cool to do. And of course, you know, with that, you might have a more hard coded value in here because you purposely want to have some side scrolling, though hopefully not on the body, uh, but somewhere else. And that leads us over to our last tip, which I'm going to come all the way back up to the top in my HTML, and I'm going to turn on this image that's right here. And we're going to look at the HTML on this one a little bit more closely because you'll see I have a header and I put a class of stack on here. Um, maybe we'll call it grid stack just to, you know, get our display grid on there right away. <clears throat> um, just because again, anything prefixed with grid hyphen will get display grid with a gap on it. Uh, and then the important thing here is I have a div which will have all of the actual content I want. And then I have an image that's just floating around here on its own. And the idea here is we're going to use this image as a background image. And the advantage with doing it this way, rather than doing it in your CSS as a background image, is it opens up the doors of using things like your WebPs, your AVIFs, having the different sources in a picture element, or even just using your source set and having different resolutions of the image and different things like that. Uh, we do have the CSS property now image set that we can use in a background image. But browser support for it is kind of weird at the moment. Uh, not everything is supported there. So this is a little bit safer and it has the added benefit of keeping the image in the markup and making it something, you know, the alt text is there. It's something that becomes accessible um, to everybody. So I, I sort of like having my image here and creating a background image. And of course, you could do a background video uh, this way as well. So let's see how we can set this up. So we're going to do my grid stack and of course this has display grid on it already so if you're doing this from scratch you might need to display grid and then what we're going to say is um, because we already have a display grid on this I'm actually going to select all the children and not select the grid stack itself and we're going to say that they all have a grid column of one over two and they all have a grid row of one over two and that means they all just overlay on top of each other now this has caused a bit of a problem we have this big image and we've lost my text because my image is coming at the end of the markup instead of at the beginning, it's just getting layered on top because they're overlapping each other. Luckily, that's easy to fix. And I'm assuming you'd be using this with an image. So you could just do this. Of course, you could have this as like a class name BG image or grid stack BG uh, instead of having to select it this way. So that's really up to you and how you like to author your CSS. But what we'll say on this is a Z index of negative one of negative one. And that should push it over to the back. Oh, of course, <laughs> I'd set up um, this class is here. I'll turn these off for now. We'll turn that back on after. It's just hiding what's below it. There we go. Okay. So that's uh, pushed my image backward. And you'll notice that I have a Z index without any positioning. When you use grid, you have access to Z index for the, all the grid items. So if you do have overlapping content, it's very easy to control their layering, which is a big plus. Um, now I'd like this text to be centered over here and I don't want my image to be so big either. It's a little exaggerated right now. So let's actually start with the image here. Let's throw an aspect ratio in here, aspect ratio of 16 over nine, uh, which will cause it to fit, but you see how it's like stretched. So we can also do an object fit of cover on that. So then we get just like a background or an object fit of cover on a background image would cause it to do the same thing. So we get our, my background image 
cover working there. Now again, this image was gigantic. I wouldn't suggest doing it exactly like this. The idea here is you can do a lot more image optimization. So do take that in, into account um, with this. I, I didn't set the demo up for image optimization on, on the image itself at this stage. Yeah, let's get this content centered. So on the grid stack itself, grid stack. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to do, we'll say display grid because that would normally be there. And then what we want to do is uh, not a line content, but a place items of center. And that should put that right down in the middle. Now we could throw a text align center on that to make it look a little better. Uh, so why don't we do that on this? We can do text center. These are classes I already have set up. So that will center that. Um, and let's just give that padding 400 and a surface neutral neutral 200 so we have a light background on it and we can read our text nice and easily and yeah there's a nice way to keep images in the dom accessible uh opens up the world for image optimization without using position absolute which i really like and if you'd like to learn more about image optimization and that world of things or if you'd like to know more grid just tricks and stuff and things i like to do with it i have playlists for both of those things right here for your viewing pleasure and with that a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome over on patreon jan johnny stewart tim and simon as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support and of course until next time don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome